Thanks for checking out another video. This one is a deep dive on Jay Norman, AKA Kid Capture on Instagram. We had the pleasure of sitting down with him and looking through his zine. He's recently released a zine and it's still available. It's really, really cool. And we went through some of the photos. So stay tuned, watch this one and go follow him, help support. But thanks for checking this out, appreciate it. We are here talking to Jay Norman um, about his photo book. Is it a book? Is it a zine? I'm going to say it's a book. Yeah, it's a book. Yeah. Coffee table book, I suppose. It's, yeah, um, mate. It's it not left room. my coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good, honestly. It's a really cool project. And yeah, we, we've got you on today to talk a little bit about what inspired you to do it, which might seem like a silly answer. Um, and... Yeah, to, you know, we'll deep dive into some of the photos specifically that are in it. But as a whole, we want to talk about why you've made the book and how you made the book, I guess, and how you made the photos in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you just want to quickly kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, I guess, and then we, we will jump into it. Um, so I'm Jay Norman. I'm 27 years old. Nearly forgot my age there. <laughs> um, yeah, live in central London, have done for the last few years. Um I go out and do street photography quite a bit. It's, it's something that I'm quite passionate about. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite a, a job yet. I'd, I'd yeah. enjoy it if it became a job, but it's yeah. more of sort of a hobby and uh, it's a bit of my sort of like meditation time, go on a nice walk through London, taking photos. Yeah. Um, and then I fell on to creating Canopsia, which was this coffee table book during lockdown, just because I had... I mean, I, I normally I run a pub, so I had an infinite amount of time on my hands, really, yeah. as yeah. Well, the whole pub industry shut down. So right. it gave me a real amount of time to be able to, well, try and document really what was going on, try and yeah. document London and the emptiness of, of during the lockdowns. Because, um, yeah, if, I mean, fingers crossed, we'll never see London like that again. It doesn't yeah. feel like they're going to take a step backwards now. Um, but yeah, it was just sort of a, a bit of a passion project, um, I suppose you could say, but it was just more to sort of document that period of time. And I feel that the coffee table book itself has become sort of more poignant looking back now, because now everything is slowly going back to normal. You realise just how sort of empty and, and derelict central London is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was that was the main premise of of the book. And it just really gave me... A nice amount of time to to be able to get out i basically would take my bike nearly every day go for a bike ride and just hit different areas of london and just see if anyone else was about or see if there was anything which which caught my eye really yeah it's really cool like, like we were just saying off camera like i look at the book and again like i'm i'm not from london and luke i know you spent a lot of time in london but for me like i, I only ever go there visiting or for the odd day here and there and I can look at the photos and really, really appreciate them. And, you know, like they make me jealous. I'm like, I want to be there taking those kind of photos. And then on top of that, you kind of have that, oh, yeah, shit, this was taken during lockdown. Everything's empty. And like I said to you, you, you know, the odds on you replicating some of these photos or anyone being able to replicate these photos are slim to none, right? Like they're, they are, yeah, that's okay. why. In that sense, I, I sort of seize the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, like, and you should, you should in every opportunity. You know, every chance you get, to see, seize that opportunity. Try and see the positive. And like you said, it's good for your mental health, right? And we've spoke about this on various other videos and podcasts that we've done. Like, how much of a like, how good it is for your mental health, like for photography. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but for me, it certainly is. Like, it's nice to go out for half an hour or a day or a week, whatever it might be, and it it does help you kind of switch off from everything. But it's really interesting, right? And I know, I know we've messed you around with trying to get this recorded because I know you were running the pub <laughs> and it feels like, oh, we should have done this before you were back in the pub. But um, yeah, it's cool that you've done that as, as a project. And the name itself, how do you pronounce it again? Canopsia. I was saying Canopsia and I was uh, saying that. I, mean, I, know, was, I did Google what it meant. Yeah, it was a bit of a random one. I was trying to find, I, I mean, I probably changed the title about 10 times. But oh, like, really? like it was, you know, it started off as like the space between us and things that were really deep. And I was just like, <laughs> and then it got to a point, I was like, I just want one word. And I sort of stumbled across this word Canopsia, which basically means sort of um, 
a place that is normally bustling with people that is now derelict and empty and yeah. cannot oh, wow. that, that feeling of sort of emptiness. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah and for me, when I read the sort of description of that word, I was just like, that fits perfectly because I was trying to catch a London that's normally, you know, yeah. with people just being yeah. completely empty. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a Joy Division song or something like that. It's got that kind of feeling to it. But that, what is it a different language then? Or yeah, is it... I think it's Greek originally. Uh, okay. I mean, I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're only the author. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it sort of, it fitted perfectly for, for me. Yeah. As soon as I saw kind of what it meant, I was just like, okay, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and that is ideal isn't it that really sums it up there is um when i used to live in london that i never went on it and the, the, there was a group of people who used to meet up uh somewhere like trafalgar square on christmas day to do a photo walk because it was the only day of the year that london was empty yeah. and i don't know if they still do that because now like there's been so many more opportunities to take an empty london photos yeah. I actually, I think I heard you talk about that in one of one of the other videos. I think I mentioned it. I was trying to. I was just thinking. I'm sure I've said this before to somebody. I kind of wish I'd gone on it now. Um, now that like the opportunity isn't there to go and do it, yeah. but similarly, like I used to cycle around. They see, I used to just cycle to work, and I'd always have my camera in my backpack, and like forever, like stopping and um, taking photos and stuff like that. But it's interesting that you were like you were saying you go out on your bike. I suppose it means you can get further than you know you would normally be able yeah to. it just means i can cover them. i mean i normally my process is because i mean I, I cycle everywhere in london anyway because it's just the quickest way to get yeah um and yeah my, my normal process like if i'm going to go out shooting for the day which i normally will is i'll just sort of pick an area i'll be like right today i'm, I'm going to go west or i'm going to go mm. sort of stratford way or pick an area cycle out there and then i'll normally lock the bike up and we'll just sort of walk that okay. area for you know a few hours and then if I'm like nah it's, it's not working here get back on the bike go to another part of London and be like okay yeah there's more going on here you know no that's a good way of doing it rather than kind of like planning specific photos like for example like we all do it right we will drive past them they'll bike past them or walk past them you're like oh that would make for a good photo maybe I should camp out here in the future and whether you do or not is a whole new story but I yeah. feel like what's really good about the photos in this is that again like i've already said yeah i can appreciate it from a, a non-londoner point yeah but i think if you're from london this probably stands out even more than most of the photos that you'd be used to seeing as a photographer because you're seeing it in a whole new light and fair enough if you're you know from london and i'm sure there's been a lot of people that have documented like the you know the, the lockdown sort of thing yeah. um times but it's so nice to hold it like like, like you said as a coffee table but yeah yeah you can yeah. really appreciate like the collection of photos and don't get me wrong some of these photos are stand out put on your prints right but sure. as a collection it works so so well and i think that's i think that's a nice thing for everyone to be able to pick up you can pick that you can pick this up anywhere in the world and you'd appreciate the photos i think mm. even as a photographer or non-photographer yeah, yeah. Really powerful thing yeah i mean it was yeah it was definitely um that's that's why I sort of put under each photo the, the date that I took it and the location. Just yeah. also for people who you know who, who do live in London but weren't you know maybe they were shielding, maybe they were vulnerable, and and didn't get out at all. You know, didn't go out for any exercise. I know a lot of people who didn't leave the house for that very long period, and it's it's nice for people who weren't able to sort of get out and to go on their daily exercise to be able to look and go, wow, you know, that was you know. Piccadilly Circus or that was the National yeah. Gallery like during the mix of it so yeah it was nice to be able to provide that sort of you know insight into what it actually looked like kind of out on the street yeah how, how did it work with like because I know like you know obviously London's a big place right but when you were in lockdown wasn't there like a certain radius that you're like legally allowed to stick to but I'm guessing if you're in London it I mean, there, 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 I think there was, I mean, it was a bit of a grey area. I mean, obviously you, you had the whole coming thing, like don't go to whatever castle halfway across the yeah, country. Yeah. Um, but it was, I think in London, it was, you know, I think if you were going for a walk, or a jog, it was within a certain sort of radius. Yeah. Um, but I think with cycling, because obviously, you know, you're not stopping, you're not brushing past people. There, there wasn't even really any traffic. 
So as I say, I would sort of pick an area and my exercise would be to get to that area. And once I got there, I mean, a lot of the time I didn't really even get off the bike. It was kind of, I would have the camera on my, my neck and would just be like, okay, that's making a good shot or no. Because there is so little people. As soon as you saw someone, you were like, oh, okay, yeah. there's something working here. You know, yeah. I can do yeah. something. Yeah, that's um, cool. And a lot of the time it was just sort of stood there with the bike between my legs. Just sort yeah. Of, yeah. Stop, take the shot and be like, right, on to the next bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't really normally like get into like chatting about gear very often on this, but like what were you using? Because you you know, something too heavy would be quite cumbersome on a So my I mean it's just here, but my go to is my Fuji X one hundred F. Okay. Yeah, that's, cool. That's I mean, they say the best camera is, you know, the camera that you've got on you. And sure. that's why I'm obsessed with my X one hundred F because it it's the camera I take absolutely everywhere with me. Every, yeah, day, yeah. every day I've got it in sort of, you know, a little sling bag just on my side. Yeah. Going to the supermarket, I literally, every time I leave the house pretty much, I've got it on me. Yeah. Just in case, because there's nothing worse than, I'm sure you've had it yeah. when you go down the street and you're going, God, I really wish I had my camera for that. Like, well, mate, I had it the other day, I took my dog for a walk and it was only round like near my house. And I saw this like, you know, I don't even know anything about cars, right? But this awesome classic car turned up, p- happened to park up in this like stone car park, mm. nothing else around. And I was like, oh, this would be the perfect photo. And I didn't have a car. I had to take one on my phone, which, you know, your phone's still a camera at the end. Yeah, of the which day. I mean, nowadays, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gutted that I didn't have one of my other cameras. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's always when you're about to leave the house and you're like, uh, no, I won't. Yeah, yeah. yeah not today. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, really yeah, yeah. So was the, uh, whole book, the whole book was taken using Fujifilm X100F. Yeah, the whole whole thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I mean, yeah. I've got that camera. I know. I know how much I love that camera. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 that, to be fair, I was going to ask that question as well, Luke. I didn't know that it was like. Well, yeah, I, I did feel like because I've got the what have I got the X Pro Two, and I, I I felt like I recognised the kind of look of those images using that like Acros simulation, maybe or. I mean, the Acros simulation is beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We were going to sort of like dive into a couple of images specifically that we've picked out, but is there anything that's kind of, have you got any favourites from the project? I mean, it's a, it's a hard one without a copy of it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Generally, they are all like, you know, mind blowing to me, like, and it's worth mentioning as well, before we just jump into the deep diving, the way you've ordered the book as well is re- like, I really like that you've positioned the photos that complement each other. And you've thought about the layout of the book, not yeah. just put them in kind of like a chronological order, right? Yeah. I, mean, I really it, like that. It yeah. Took, it, I would say, I, I, I think I worked on creating, I mean, I've, I've never, a coffee table book was always something I wanted to do. Yeah. And weirdly enough, I, I shoot a lot in the Tate Modern. Yeah. Um, okay. And that's just like my happy place. I just yeah. every time I go back, I'm like, I can't get a different shot, and I do, and I'm just like, this building just keeps giving. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and weirdly enough, one of my things just before the lockdown was like, oh, I, I want to make a coffee table book of the Tate, incorporating the people who visit and the architecture and just that sort of thing. Um, and I'd never, I'd looked into making a coffee table book, and then I think. I probably this the, the final print for that was probably the eighth or ninth draft. Oh wow! And it was a lot of thought went into the wow, the, yeah, positioning and and you know the sort of there's I think there's a page where there's the Ritz, the hotel, and then there's a guy out on the street eating a box of Ritz crackers. Oh, nice! It was, it was like the juxtaposition <laughs> of the Ritz crackers. Yeah, there, yeah. The Ritz is open, but the actual Ritz hotel was closed. It was that sort of juxtaposition. <laughs> yeah. um, right. And they were taken. They were taken nearly a year apart. Those two photos. So to, yeah. to see that you've thought about the layout mm. is, is really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet yeah. it was an awesome, like an awesome project to put together. I mean, what was the kind of process of doing it? Did did you print out photos and kind of stack them on a wall, or did you just keep looking at them and putting them side by side on a screen? I had. Um, I mean, I started off. So I started off, and I, th- I think it was. A website which isn't that great for printing. I don't know if I can say the name, but um, it I use that to sort of make a very small copy, yeah. just to see, just to get an idea. And then once I once that came sort of in the post, I was just actually like, this could be something. If I really put time and effort into it, it could be something which really is nice. Yeah. 
Um, so then I went on to another website. Again, I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> you can say it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I went on to Canva. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and used Canva to then sort of structure and start organizing the layout because it's, it's such an easy way to, yeah. to, to sort of visually see without printing. Yeah. Um, and that was that was the main way that I would sort of go in, do it, and then go back a couple of nights later and be like, actually, that looks better over here. This one looks better here. And as I say, it was about six months of, <laughs> yeah. sort of going back every week and being like, no, I'm going to change something again. I'm going to change the title. You know. I suppose the only kind of saving grace of that is like, well, as bad as it might sound, is that at, well, it's a good thing by then because I'm guessing when you made the book, everything was kind of back open right like you yeah. like it yeah. wasn't as as quiet as it, it, it was so i'm yeah. guessing that you got a series of photos and then you had a finish because i know that we've yeah. spoken to people before that will like finish a project and it will take them six months to make but in that six months they, they've taken four or five new photos that they want to incorporate somehow but with yeah. you at least you had a selection of photos and you're like right this is what I've got to work with. But I mean, I would love to see the B-roll shots that you, that didn't make the book because I'm sure that there's at least twice the amount and I'd love to see those photos. Yeah, there is there's an awful them. lot on a hard drive, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I must admit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, I don't know, it was, I think the final print was the beginning of 20, like I think it was around sort of February, March, 2021. Mm. um so that was like we were still just coming i think we were starting to come out of like the the final lockdown yeah, before yeah. That kind of opened up and said right we're not locking down again yeah uh, there there were still a few even though it was opening up there were still a few shots where i was just like, i definitely could have could have squeezed into the book i reckon but yeah again yeah. It's, they're good things just to have have on the back burner for other projects i suppose yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, they're really good. Well, yeah, let's let's deep dive into some of our yeah. players. With the I know, yeah. I know for a fact, Luke, that would be your kind of shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you can resonate with that. Yeah, definitely. I really like just in general terms, like the composition of it and everything. I was, when I was like looking through it, I was like, it kind of stood out. Um, but then it's obviously like the kind of the meaning behind it it feels like it immediately speaks to you about like what the project is with that person set in there they could be looking quite you know depressed or um something like that but then you've got this like ray of light shining down on them that's almost like this kind of hopeful kind of element to it um and I'm guessing that that was like a bit of a lucky get you know to get that ray of light in there yeah, I mean, it, it was it was very lucky to yeah to get that sort of ray of light coming through, coming through the sort of trees, which like it was it wasn't actually until just after I took the photo and then sort of hit the playback button and looked and I was just like, oh crap! Like that added a whole another that added just a special little element into it because, yeah. as you say, I, I think that shot in particular, um, I had one or two people ask ask for that particular photo as a print actually. Mm. Because because they said that it really did encapsulate sort of the feeling of lockdown. Certainly for me at the time, I mean, I, I spent I spent the whole of lockdown um, above the pub that I sort of like managed and um, it was, it, I was completely alone. Right. So it was quite hard really. I mean, that's part of the reason why I got out so much was just because if I was to stay in, you know, for six, however long it was, seven, eight months by yeah. myself, then I would have gone crazy um and that really to me did sort of encapsulate the mood of of everyone because there was this real at the very beginning there was a real sense of you know community and everyone sort of came together everyone was helping each other you know where they could and then the lockdown came around and everyone sort of you know everyone popped on a zoom quiz and was doing you know watching Tiger King and then after a while it got to a bit of like oh like you know, this this is yeah, the a bit longer than I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the reality hits that like shit's real. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you realise that and we are like that, I spoke like, past that guy, and I, it really, I don't know, it really it really caught my eye because he was. I mean, he was enjoying he was enjoying that sunshine, but yeah. still, as much as he was enjoying it, he really looked like he wasn't enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> interesting because I would take that photo without anyone there, or I'd yeah. like to think that I would. 
and I'd still like it as a photo. Like if that person wasn't on the bench, I would still like the photo. Yeah. If that person was on the bench doing anything else, I would still like that photo. He could be sitting there licking an ice cream and I'd still like the photo. Yeah. But the fact that he's got, you know, his head in his hands. Yeah, the real sort that, of... Yeah, yeah. regardless yeah. if you know what's really going on in that photo or not, your perception, your first thought when you look at it is like, oh, that does captivate exactly what's going on. It's empty. Yeah. He's sitting there like, what What the hell is going on? And even if that's true or not, it, in years to come, when you look back at a photo like that, you're going to go, yeah, that captures exactly what a lot of people are thinking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to out, but still very alone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really, um, it was, yeah, it, it definitely for me, once I got it back, I, I knew instantly that that was definitely going in the book. Because yeah. It, it really was, a, you know, it portrays that feeling of, not hopelessness, but I think that's the nice thing about the photo is it is almost, you know, he's got this sort of hopelessness look going on, but then that beam of light that comes through the trees is almost the, you know, the ray of hope. Yeah. Sure. Coming through. It's like, we're almost, at, we were getting towards the end of it. So you've got that final push, like, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And this, this was taken in Notting Hill, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really nice photo. Yeah. Um, I, I did wonder, I was going to, we, you mentioned it before we started recording that the, the last photo was the only one that was kind of staged, although it wasn't particularly staged, um, you know. Yeah, it was a so, same sense of luck, but yeah. still kind of so staged. Yeah, but that one, because I, I, I did wonder as I was looking through it, were any of these photos staged or, or not? And that was the one that I did think, it doesn't look like it is, but because of the positioning of, you know the gen the composition the position of the light and everything it felt so like i hate to say lucky because i don't think like when you know what you're looking for in a photograph it's not it, it's kind of luck and it isn't but yeah uh the situations lucky in terms of yeah or well, you spot situations you something that good to yeah shoot. i mean with, yeah. with the street photography itself i feel there's always there's always um there's always an element of you have good, I find I have good days and bad days you know you go out and I'll, I'll know within the first five minutes whether it's a good day or bad day yeah I'll, I'll go out and you know the first few shots and I'll just be like it's something's not clicking today yeah. Whereas yeah, if I, have, I have, have a lot more of them than I do good days <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then when it's a good day I'll go out and you know the first first two or three shots I'll sit there and be like, like something's you know the, the levels are just right today something's yeah. right and with that that final photo, um, that was outside Tate Tate Britain, mm. um, and it it was definitely a massive element of luck. But that is that is the only sort of semi staged photo of of the book. I mean, personally, with my sort of street photography that I do, none of none of my works ever sort of staged. I like to capture yeah. just life as it's going on. Um, sort of just off the cuff to you know capture the beauty in everyday life that people just don't pay attention to. Yeah. 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 Um, but with that one, it was definitely luck because like, I remember, I remember it so very clearly. But I was sort of cycling past Tate Britain along the Thames, and um, I sort of looked over and noticed an ambulance was parked up perfectly in the middle. And I think you know they had a second, or they were on their lunch break, or whatever it was. But the, the female um, medic was, you know, she sat there and it was quite clear that she was like, can you take a photo of me? And the male medic was sort of oh, like, nice. photos yeah. on her phone. And I sort of, I remember I saw it and I was just like, this isn't going to happen again. I just like slammed on my brakes and sort of ran back. And I just said to them, I was like, guys, would you mind standing either side, you know, of, of the ambulance? Yeah. And just sort of got that shot. Um, and as I said, it's weirdly enough, the, uh, it must have been from hashtag Tate or whatever, but they Tate messaged me and said, you know, oh, this is wonderful. Can we have the, the color version if you've got it? And, you know, both versions um, and we would, and they reposted it. And I was thinking yeah. last time I looked, it was like 340,000 likes or something. Wow. Which he was wow. just like, nice. Yeah. I, 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 I love the Tate as well. So yeah, for me, yeah. it's all round, like a big, big, big compliment and a big achievement. Oh, mate, yeah, yeah. Again, it appeals to, you don't have to be a photographer to appreciate that. Like, yeah. like, um, like, if you're listening to this or watching this, when we say the photo stage, we don't mean stage as in it's paid actors, you know, you've got that, that's where the, the kind of look element comes in, that you've stumbled across this scene. But mm. The skill element is not just taking the photo, it's having the balls to go up and, you know, take the photo in the first place, then take a good photo and to look back at it and go, yeah, you know, 
actually position it out, you know, what's it called? Um, frame the actual shot itself and yeah. take it. It's not just getting lucky and cycling past and taking a photo. There's, you know, there's time and thought that have gone into it. You've just got lucky in terms of... Yeah, I mean, I, I the opportunity. Yeah. I thought yeah, yeah. myself, I was like, this this isn't going to happen again. Yeah. Like, if, if I didn't go back, I would have literally just kicked myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's a great end to the book as well, without... Spoiler! Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's an unbelievable ending to the book. So I think it was the first photo that I actually showed my missus, who's not into photography at all. Like, she can appreciate it, but, you know, she's not a photographer herself. And I picked up the book and I was like, look at that, because I knew it would impress her. And then she, you know, sat there and read through the book then, or read through the book. But I just think it's a great, it's a great photo to end the book with. And it's a really nice nod to the NHS frontline workers. Yeah, it was sort of a yeah. tip in my hat at the people who really did, you know, the, yeah. who just put in an unbelievable amount of effort. And yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Never say thank you enough to, you know, everyone out there who did work the whole way through it. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it might be the last photo in the book, but it is not the last photo I, I want to talk about. <laughs> I want to talk about nice. That was really nice. That was good, <laughs> wasn't it? I didn't even plan that either. I, 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 I was gonna say, oh, this sounds. I should have just played it cool. I was gonna say we should give an honourable mention to the last photo, but you brought it up already, Luke. Mm. I want to talk about the National Gallery photo. I think that is amazing. Yeah, I, I've got loads of questions about it, but. Like I said off camera, to me, like I'm a skateboarder, right? So my I've grew up watching skate videos, reading skateboard magazines, looking at all these photos. I, I could tell you a list of photog- like skateboard photographers that inspire me. And then at the same time, like I said, I look at people that do a lot of street photography and they happen to stumble across skateboarders or skateboard parks or whatever it might be, and they take really good photos, but I don't know if it's just like the stubbornness in me. They're not skateboard photos to me. That might sound a bit silly. Yeah, I know it's exactly. Hard to understand, but they're not, you know, you're not there with the skateboarder. You're not like in that moment with them. You're not in that session. You're just taking a photo, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying they're bad photos. They're just two different things. Yeah. But to me, that, that like I said, that needs to be on the front of a magazine or in a two-page spread. I think the photo itself is amazing and again this might be one of those ones where it's certainly not staged and you know you i'm sure you'll appreciate that you might have gotten lucky in terms of the scene that you've you've got but that to me is just i don't know it resonates with me i'm just 100 percent jealous of that photo like i wish <laughs> i would be able to take a photo that good or come across that kind of scene but yeah i don't know what your thoughts are on it yeah i mean it was again it was um a, a, ma- a massive bit of luck um, you know, there's, there's always that element of luck um, and that right place, right time. And I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, like I, I grew up skating as well. Um, and in fact, that's probably what got me or is what got me into photography in the first place. So I used to be going down the skate park every summer or every, every week. And I slowly noticed that I wasn't on my board as much and I, I, I got this, I think I must have been about, I don't know, 12 and I got like a digital camera, thank you mum and dad for my yeah. birthday and the quality was awful, it was, you know, it was a terrible, terrible camera but it did the job. You didn't care when you was a kid. Right? Exactly and I, I noticed that I was spending more time off my board and taking photos of friends. Um, so I mean it always does catch my eye when I see people skating but it was again this I was going through sort of Trafalgar Square outside the National Gallery and because it was so empty I mean London's noisy but when there's no one in London and there's one person skating you can hear it for miles like it (laughs) it echoes through the whole city so I sort of was stood down by Trafalgar Square and then I kept hearing someone and I was like so someone's skating and it was just one yeah one dude just by himself and he was just he was trying to get it down every time. He was just like wall ride, like trying to wall ride outside the national. Oh, you didn't go and talk to him? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, I, I, mate, that impresses me even more. I generally nah. thought that you might have seen someone skating and, again, you've had the courage or made your own look, should I say, and gone up to him and said, do you mind if I take a photo? But to know that that is like a candid yeah. photo is... It was amazing. candid. He just, he, he did it sort of two or three times and was by himself. And I think, it, I think that was, you know, he sort of went, 
came back, did it. And I think there were three times. And that was the second. I took three photos and that was the second one. And I settled on that just because I managed to time it. Per like he is perfectly in the middle of that, those pillars. Like he is perfectly in the centre of the building. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, shout out to the dude, whoever it is. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it's not, that's not an easy trick to do. Yeah. Um, like, you know, a wall ride on its own. I don't know. For me, it's certain, you know, not something that I've ever achieved. But um, yeah, it's it's so sick. I absolutely love it. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, but it was it was just yeah. He he kind of he was doing his thing, and I was just sort. Of, I mean, he noticed me there, and I think yeah. I think he was just like, all right, yeah. Because weirdly enough, he had two or three more attempts, and then. And then he was like, oh, I'm done and went and like he got his stuff and started going off. So I was just like, I wonder if he squeezed in those last few attempts because he know like he clocked me there with the camera. Yeah. And whoever you are, if he ends up watching this at yeah. any point, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I got home and I was I was looking at it and I was just like, I was like yes, I was like, that is hundred yeah. percent one for the book, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's that lovely feeling when you've taken a shot and when you look at it, it almost like takes your breath away a little bit you just yeah. like you get like that little oh. kid kind of like jumping yeah up yeah the buzz. yeah Again, take take the person take you know take that subject out of that photo to get a photo of the gallery like that with no one in yeah yeah it's hard enough right like yeah i just i don't think you could ever do that now no matter what time of day you yeah, went. i mean london's popping now is yeah. busy <laughs> yeah. you might be able to take that out 5 a.m. if you're lucky, if you're really lucky, but still to take it in the day like that, it's really nice. And then I kind of wanted to ask you as well, but this this might be a bit more of a general question, but obviously the whole book is black and white, right? Yeah. Did you go into it with that mentality or did you happen to take photos in colour and black and white and then decide to make them black and white or was it always like, you know, lockdown's a bit gloomy, I'm going to I'm gonna shoot black and white, really show off the kind of city in, in that kind of mood? Or do you just straight up only take black and white photos? Yeah, I mean, that was, um, I definitely, definitely sway more towards black and white. Yeah. Always have done it. Like for me, there's something, especially with Fuji and, and the Acros filters, like they're, they're so beautifully rich in contrast and the images they produce just like, they're stunning. I can't, I can't get over it. Um, like it's by far my favourite camera. I'm trying to save up to get the next one up now, which is X100B, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I nearly did that, but I, I still think there's, pros and cons yeah. i mean I, i'm gonna yeah. wait until the next one just because yeah, yeah. at the moment there's not so much difference that it's yeah. going to sway me to pay that much more yeah. yeah um but i yeah i mean I, I definitely do shoot more black and white I, I think it is a tendency of mine it always has been with street photography um but of recent and i mean i do i do have days where i go out and i'm like no i'm like forcing myself to shoot in color today just because if you if you get set in the same ways of constantly doing the same thing then not that you'll always get the same results but i like to i like to set myself sort of weird little challenges um if i'm going out shooting cool. hence why like, i think you guys commented a bit about like the double exposures i've done on instagram and stuff like yeah. with the colors and overlapping people in the underground and stuff like that again that was just all like i was like okay today i'm gonna go out and focus on double exposures which again the, it like the built-in double exposure setting yeah. just makes it so so nice and so so much fun to play with you know it's also a cool um, of like learning right because you're setting yourself these these tasks these goals if you like to become a better photographer but at the same time just because you're doing that and you're practicing a certain art form doesn't mean that you won't get a banger from time to time do you know what I mean? yeah yeah exactly. you could be a complete novice and still take a fucking fantastic photo do you know what I mean exactly. and, it, and it's not if you're not out there shooting no matter what you're trying to shoot if you're not out there shooting you're you're not gonna you know you're not gonna progress yeah. mm. but, I mean for the for the book itself um black and white just seemed to it seemed to make sense um just because like the, the images themselves as I say a, a few of the ones that I got just I was, I was they're 100% for the book and then most of them were in black and white and I was just, I, di I didn't want to do sort of some black and white, some colour popping up. I wanted to keep yeah. a consistent theme. And I thought as well, you know, with the whole thing, it's, it was trying to be sort of that impactfulness. Hence why I, I changed the title and I, I wanted it just one word, just one punchy, you know, just singular thing. Yeah. Um, and I feel that sort of the black and white throughout 
pulled it all together and, and made it sort of a feeling throughout the whole book. Um, so yeah, I, I settled on it, but I don't don't shoot specifically just black and white. I do do like to shoot color every now and then, but it, it just sort of set the tone and the mood of of the book for me. Yeah. I think it, it it fit quite well, so I decided to stick with it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. good. I think that's quite a nice like way of looking at any kind of project. You know, you, again going back to the way that you've really thought about again like you didn't kind of think that you you know you didn't take these photos going oh i'm going to make a book but yeah. the fact that you've you've got this collection of images and then you've decided to make a book from it and you know show that journey again i just really like the layout of the book i think it complements all the photos and i can see myself picking it up it'll probably mean even more picking it up in a few years time you know hopefully we'll be looking back sooner rather than later and going do you remember when that COVID thing was around yeah, yeah. Um, so it will become even more important as, as like a, you know, a showcase of a time that we went through this, right? Yeah, so, apart yeah. history, I suppose, hopefully looking back, it will be, yeah. you know, it will be in the history books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you do want one of these books, drop Jay a message. Your Instagram name is Kid Capture or Kid underscore Capture. There yeah. will be a link down below. Uh, is that the best place to kind of get hold of you if you want to pick up a copy? Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a link in, in my bio and um, which leads to sort of a web shop. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, uh, there isn't gonna be many left because I know you've given us copy number 32 of 50. Yeah. Super I mean, appreciate you know, that. Who knows if, if more people want some afterwards, I might do up to 75. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can get them reprinted if you need to, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just great. glad that we're the 32nd most important people to you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, honestly, if you do want to pick up a, a book, then yeah, drop Jay a message. We highly recommend it. it is, yeah, it is awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your time, Jay. I really appreciate it, mate. And uh, yeah, it'll be awesome to catch up, catch up with you again in the future, for sure.